What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to talk about laying out uh, different collection view cells with collection view layouts. So here you see, of course, we've got a collection view that starts off with this five column, uh, even squares. And then as we scroll, we get to this three column with larger items. So we'll take a look at item size, the spacing, the section insets, the padding, all that good stuff. Uh, as well as how to have this be dynamic on a cell by cell basis like you see here. So I think this was requested by quite a few of you in the comments or you know with my email or Instagram directly. So uh, here's that video for all of you. So make sure you destroy that like button as always for the video and the YouTube algorithm. If you're a returning viewer, hit subscribe while you're at it. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's dig into some collection view flow layouts. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template and let's go ahead and call this collection view layout. Make sure your language was, is Swift, your lifecycle is UI kit, and interface is storyboard. Let's go ahead and continue and save it to our desktop. So I've grabbed a picture here just from Google Images. So let's go to our XE assets folder here, right click and create a new image set. And it's a dog picture. So let's just call it dog and drag it on in. This is what we'll be using for, uh, you know, showing a photo in every collection view cell. And uh, after we do that, let me expand my Xcode window here and jump to my view controller. Let me also bump up the size so everyone can see it. And before we start writing our code, let's select a simulator uh, from this list. We'll go with the Pro Max and hit that run button. And we should see it loaded up in our simulator here in just a second, there it goes. So before we look at actual layouts and how to adjust it, we need to, of course, have a collection view to adjust. So let's go ahead and set up a collection view in the following way. It's gonna be a very basic UI collection view. Uh, we'll start off as optional so we can uh, assign something later on uh, in view to load using self. So we're gonna create a collection view with a uh, frame of, we'll say zero, we're going to say collection view uh, dot delegate is self. We also want to assign its data source just like that. And then we're going to want to unwrap it so we can add it as a sub view just like that. And let's see, this is complaining because we have not conformed to said protocols up here. So we want to conform to the collection view, definitely not spelling that correctly, collection view delegate, there it is. And the UI collection view data source, just like that. And then we want number of items. We're gonna return, let's do like a hundred. And we also want a cell for item. And we're going to say let cell equals collection view. And we're going to DQ a reusable cell, not a configurable one. Let's try that one more time. We're going to DQ a reusable cell with a cell ID of cell for the given index path. And let's go ahead and return said cell. And we can't run it just yet because we need to create a cell and give it this ID and use this to register said cell. So let's go ahead and create a new file here for our cell. So right click and hit new file. It'll be a Cocoa Touch class. It's gonna be a subclass of UI collection view cell. Just like that. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and call it a photo collection view cell since that's basically what we're gonna add in it. Once it's created, go ahead and add a identifier property on here. I like to use the same name as the class itself. Go ahead and override the initializer. And we also wanna bring in that other required initializer so it doesn't complain at us. And we're simply gonna have one image view on this cell. So we're gonna say private let image view uh, is a U uh, image view. And we're gonna create it in here. If you've seen any of my other videos, this is how I create all my uh, properties uh, and subviews with anonymous closures. So if you haven't seen this pattern before, I, I encourage you to watch that video uh, on this pattern. Uh, content mode will make this uh, to be scale aspect fill. We wanna add this as a subview to the content view. And let's see, we also want a way to configure the image of the cell. So we're simply gonna say func configure with image UI image. I'll say image view dot image is image. The reason this is optional is because the image constructor is optional. And we also wanna lay out our image. So bear with me, almost at the layout part of it. We're simply gonna say the image views frame is the size of the content view. And for every cell, we want to reset the image view. And that should be everything we need in the image view, or in the cell rather. And now let's go back to our view controller that we were working in before. And we simply want to register the cell before we use it. So we can say collection view, go ahead and register this cell for its ID. And down here, we can uh, DQ this cell with its ID. And we just wanna cast it as the appropriate cell type. Uh, if we're not able to cast it, we want to, uh, we'll just do a fatal error, so we'll just crash the app. Uh, you wanna handle it more appropriately, of course, in your actual app. Uh, and then we can call the configure function with our image and we created an image called dog. So now let's go ahead after doing all that setup and let's run this app and let's see what we get. Hopefully we don't crash. All right, so we are crashing. So let's take a look at why we crashed. I think it's always helpful to keep debugging moments. UI collection view must have an initializer with a non-nil layout, okay. So this is actually bringing us to the layout portion of the video. So a collection view is capable of taking uh, a standard layout or a customized layout as a parameter in its initializer. So I'm just gonna create the common one that's used, which is a UI collection view flow layout, just like that. And one other thing I realized is we never actually gave the collection view a frame. So let me just say the frame of this. We already unwrapped it, so we can say its frame is uh, view.bounds, so it takes up the entirety of the screen. Go ahead and run it. Let's see what this is complaining. I think this parameter is actually called collection view layout. Yep. Let's try that one more time and see what happens. All right, cool. So here's our collection view of this uh, dog, and we have all of our cells. And uh, the first question that comes to mind is, well, why are there uh, seven columns, right? Where did, where did the cell size come from? Um, and the answer is it's the standard one that the flow layout is taking. So now we'll talk about the sizing, the spacing, uh, otherwise known as padding. So all of that is controlled by the layout itself. And there's two ways you can assign those properties. Uh, the first way is you can simply assign them in a static way. So let's say you wanted to assign a item size and you want it to be a square being one half of uh, the V or one third of the views width. You could do that and you can do that. And if you run it now, you'll notice that it actually will be in two columns. And that poses another interesting question as to what gives, why is it two columns? Uh, and the answer there is because there's padding that's taking into account. So it's actually rolling over the cell. The other thing you'll notice actually here is these aren't square images. So something seems to be rolling out of the cell. 
So let's actually go back to our cell. Whoops, let's go back to our cell. And in here, we're gonna say content view, clips to bounds is true. Go ahead and run that one more time. And uh, you should notice they are square images now, so we don't have anything overflowing the cell, but we still have two columns. So let's take a look at spacing. So spacing is, there are two properties of spacing. And spacing is controlled by a minimum inter item spacing and a minimum line spacing. So the item spacing as the terminology implies is a spacing between uh, every item and the line spacing rather uh, is the spacing between every line vertically in this case, every new line that's created. So if you set those to zero, you'll see that now you have a perfectly flush three, uh, three column grid. Um, and this is basically how uh, Instagram as well like does their collection view layouts. They have uh, different flow layouts. They have a framework that they've actually open sourced called uh, uh, IG list kit, which is basically just a wrapper on top of collection view. But this is how you can control that type of stuff. And, you know, hypothetically, if you wanted some margin between each of these, you would want to uh, add some padding there. Now let's do two just so we can see it more easily. And you would want to subtract it from the uh, size that you're providing to each item. So we'll just subtract two. I think that should be sufficient spacing. And now you'll see that there is a there is spacing between every uh, cell. One thing you'll notice is there's no spacing between the edges of the screen, so the left and the right side, and that brings us to section insets. So a section inset is basically what it sounds like. It's the inset around uh, every section. So this is just one section of the collection view, and there is a top. Uh, call it margin, call it padding, Apple calls it insets, left inset, right inset, as well as a bottom inset. So most often uh, I like to set the left and right because the bottom and top is handled by, uh, you know, the safe area. But this is uh, a UI edge insets and uh, it takes a top left, uh, bottom and right. So we'll say zero, uh, two, zero, and two. And if we run this one more time, now you'll see that we have space on the left and the right, but once again, it flowed over onto two columns. And the reason is, is because we need to bump up the amount of points we're subtracting from the item size to give it uh, even sizing. So in this case, there's two points here, two points here, two here, and two here, giving us a total of eight. Uh, so when we when you do the math, basically, the spacing here looks larger because uh, it implicitly th there's a little more space left over because of the item size. I think the subtraction correctly would be 1.5 or 2.5, but you can play around with the numbers and make sure it suits kind of what you need and the look you want. So th this is the fundamental of how to change up the spacing and sizing. And uh, the other important thing that I will share before wrapping up this video is this approach allows you to set these values in a static way. Now, what if you wanted the values of these to be different on a cell by cell basis? Uh, that brings us to the collection view, uh, delegate flow layout. So I'm gonna do that in an extension here. So we're gonna extend the view controller. And there is a uh, protocol called UI collection view delegate flow layout, and each of the things we just talked about can be passed in via a function. So for example, section insets. So let's just return what we had before, UI edge insets with a top of zero, two, zero, and two. And next up we can have uh, line spacing. So here we have two options, there is uh, collection view layout, let's see, minimum line spacing and minimum inter item spacing. So we talked about both of these. So we're gonna do both of them, inter item spacing. And then similarly, the last one that is also available here is item size. And you can return CV size with a width and a height. So you can say uh, view.frame.size.width over three. And I believe we were subtracting three as well. 
And uh, this gives you the distinctive advantage of you don't need to necessarily have this collection view be optional now. Uh, and the reason being is uh, you can just create it up here uh, with a standard collection view flow layout and the delegate will be used to basically figure out those values. So we can say here, UI collection view flow layout, just like that. And no need to assign it again here and we can get rid of all this optionality. Uh, also pro tip, I mentioned it before, you can hold option and multi line select just like that. Pretty cool. Get rid of this guard. And uh, let's see, if we go ahead and run this, we should have the exact same results, which we do, which is pretty cool. But the more interesting thing is, notice that each of these functions passes in a uh, parameter, right? To figure out the position. So in this case, it's a section. Uh, in this case, it's also the section uh, you can specify it for. Let's see, in this case, it's also the section. And in this case, I believe it's every single item. So what we can do is let's do uh, if index path dot row is less than 50, let's go ahead and return a different size. So this isn't the cleanest way of course to do this, but uh, let's return divided by five. Uh, generally you would wanna split it out into different sections for different sizing and all that good stuff, but we'll just do this for now. So you can see up here, we have these five, uh, five columns. And then down here, it switches to three columns. So if you've ever wondered how uh, collection views are used to create these really nice looking uh, kind of dynamic UIs, it's all about the layout. Uh, and this is just one layout that's built by Apple into UIKit, but you can create your own layout. And if you actually click into here, you'll see uh, the functions that we just implemented. So we've got the, let's see, collection view layout, there's size for item, you can have an inset for section, minimum line spacing, insert item. You can also specify the header size and the footer size on a section by section basis. Um, and by using them in the function, you can make them dynamic, you can make them different for iPad, so on and so forth. Um, so the bottom line here is, I guess the takeaway that I would like to call out is collection views are super powerful. Uh, customizing the layout is definitely a bit of work and takes a little bit of uh, calculations and math to get all your uh, values correct. But once you have it, it's, uh, you know, a, a collection view can truly drive your whole app. So if you think about Instagram, uh, their feed, their discover page, their profile, every single thing is a collection view, uh, more or less. Uh, even their, I believe, notifications, which looks like a table view, is a collection view. Um, so you can, you can go wild with this is the point. So that all said, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't destroyed the like button yet, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the videos and channel quite a bit. Comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you guys use collection views? Do you like them? Are they complicated? Do you have any suggestions, any feedback, anything you want to learn that you're unclear on? Uh, a lot of these video ideas, uh, if not all of them, come from you guys. And I like prioritizing the things that I share based on what is going to help the majority of you the soonest. So. Um, last thing I'll mention is also hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer and you enjoy the content. I try to do daily Swift uploads. I definitely skip a day or two here and there uh, for sanity's sake, but uh, I love making this content for you guys. So thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video.